First cast missed one, second cast hooked up. He's gonna jump. Found a little hard spot in the middle of some grass. Threw a couple baits over him that they weren't real happy about. One cast with a deep, tiny crankbait and got bit right away. So, where are you? There was clearly, clearly fish there. They just were not coming up to look at a anything above them. Sometimes they're just, as they say, feeding, feeding down. Deep tiny crankbait, kind of a citrus shad, I believe, is what that's called. But it makes a great, a great bluegill imitator in northern lakes too. So that's the one I put on, and fish number one. So I was just fishing down a little grass edge here and saw a couple boulders on my 360 actually in the grass. Flipped in there, caught a couple fish, got a couple bites and drifted off of it. So I figured I'd go ahead and fire up the big motor and take a, take a run by it with the side imaging, kind of show you what ideally you're looking for on a big grass flat in a hard spot. A hard spot on grass is like a magnet to bass. And this is what we're looking at right here is you know, there's just a couple big boulders sitting on all this grass. And this is a massive, massive grass flat. And this little boulder area is no bigger than my boat. But that's, that's ideally what you're looking for. You know, typically I'll throw a waypoint on that. And uh, yeah, typically on a big flat like this, it's, this, this, this map doesn't have any detailed contours. I mean, we're fishing in Minnesota, right? We got 11,000 lakes. There's no way that they can all have high definition contour. So it just shows as a big flat. So it's where you just kind of got to do your homework. And the best way to find them is early in the year before the weeds come up. If you can get out here at ice out and just spend a lot of time with your side imaging running these spots and plug in waypoints and come back and fish them later in the year once the grass comes up. But the technology is good enough now where my side imaging on my hummingbird will pick out those rocks through all the grass um, without any problem. On this, on this unit, I actually like to run range rings. Each one of those rings is 100 feet. And then the two little lines, which you can overlay on your boat icon on a Solix, are actually your side imaging range. So whatever I set my side imaging range to, whether I increase it or decrease it, it will actually compensate with those lines. So I exactly know how far I'm looking out to the sides when I go by a spot. So if I'm running a sweeping pattern back and forth, looking for hard spots in a grass flat like this, I every time I make a lap, I know exactly where my boat needs to be, so I, so I'm not, uh, you know, covering the same path more than once, or you know, missing areas in between. So it's kind of a cool feature you can put on there. But yeah, we're going to go back by it here again. But it's, you know, this is as you can see, there's plenty of grass on either either side of me, and then. Uh, yeah, right here is your, you can see right here, there's this vein of, this vein of rock here that runs, it's about, the, like I said, about the length of my boat. Big boulder right there on the end of it, which is gonna be a key spot. Big boulder actually surrounded by grass, and then it kind of narrows down and, and tails out. Um, looks like maybe turned into some smaller gravel, and there's a couple, couple bigger boulders on the end, but that's, that's ideally what you what you look for, man. If you can find a hard spot in a giant grass flat, it's it's a bass magnet for sure. This crankbait, the lip on it is like so small that the vibration on it is really really subtle. So when you get bit on it, there's like no mistaking a bite because the vibration is so subtle on it that that you pick up every little every little blade of grass on it. You can totally feel the grass. And then when a fish just kind of slack lines you and just, you just feel that little tiny bit of vibration stop. There's no mistaken bites on it. Go. He chewed his way right up the tail. Just feel that little tick, tick, and then, and then wait. Just a little fella. We both flip him, I think. That's one of the cool things 
about this tiny crankbait is it's a little bitty crankbait, like small, but Scott, get him back real quick. A little bitty crankbait, but it's got the hybrid trebles on it, which have an amazing gap on them and they're ultra strong. So for a tiny little crankbait, it'll hook and hold great big fish. You can lean on them, you can pressure them. They do not come unhooked on that bait. Typically a little bitty crankbait has little bitty hooks on it. Not this one, the hooks on this one are all, they're all business. Or that one actually, that one like smacked it. Those other bites were just kind of, just kind of inhaled it, just got kind of heavy on it. That one actually smacked it. Or another little fella. Yeah, that thin flat-sided bait is traditionally a cold, a cold, uh, a cold water bait. Um, they work. They work year round. They really do. I like them in this situation because it's with that tight wobble, they come through grass really, really well. And for, for some reason, that profile, the largemouth seemed to really key in on it. That tight wiggle of this bait definitely seemed to trigger largemouth bites. And the nice thing about it is, I mean, if you, if you want to burn this bait, you can burn it and it tracks perfectly straight. That one slack lined it. Another little peanut. I almost always crank with 12 pound fluorocarbon. Um, slower reel. I like just kind of that, that consistent feel you get with the slower gear ratio. I just, I'm one of the guys that if I want more speed, I just reel faster. A 12 pound fluorocarbon, I'd say 90% of my cray. On very, very rare occasions, if I need to get just a teeny bit of depth out of like a, a DT20 or a DT16, I will crank with 10, but almost always 12 and occasionally, occasionally 14. If I'm cranking a lot of wood and depth isn't even an issue, or sometimes if I'm trying to take a little bit of depth off of a crankbait, I'll crank with a little bit heavier line 14, but you know, 95% of the time it's 12 pound fluorocarbon. Slow gear ratio, and I like to crank with graphite. This is the, I like to crank with graphite. I mean, rod manufacturers are, have the materials and the versatility to, to create the action of glass in a graphite rod. So you have all the benefits of glass. This rod is super, super soft. You have all the benefits of glass, but you still have the feel of graphite. So if you hang a weed or, you know, you just get better feel for the rock with a graphite rod. Another thing, especially when you're cranking smallmouth, is smallmouth eat a crankbait completely different than a largemouth. They, they slap at the bait a lot. Sometimes you'll actually feel a smallmouth knock a crankbait around a little bit before they actually inhale it. And with the with a glass rod, you just don't you just don't know that that's happening. You just don't get that feel. You know, largemouth are usually just come and inhale the bait. Less of an issue there and there. There's some that'll that'll claim that the there's one. Some will claim that the the glass is a benefit that it allows the fish to inhale the bait better. Um, all it really is doing is deadening the feel. So with a graphite rod, you just, you'll feel the fish inhale the bait, but you just, if you do it enough, you'll just train yourself to let them eat it. Um, no different than if you're fishing a frog or a topwater. Um, you know, you don't set the hook on the blow up. You set the hook when you know that the fish has the bait. And same thing with a crankbait. When you feel that fish getting on it, you don't necessarily set the hook. You just go ahead and let that rod load up and you won't you won't miss any fish at all on a on graphite compared to compared to glass if you just just let things run their course yeah this particular crankbait comes i almost i almost almost missed that one this particular crankbait comes in a in a deep version which i'm throwing deep tiny 7 and then it comes in a tiny 4 which is the 
shallower version and they have basically the identical it's a brown one there's a smallie living amongst those largemouth but that uh they have the, the same action and a lot of times cranking oh he spit something up a lot of times cranking you need to you actually need to bump the cover for him to bite um it doesn't seem to be the case right now but typically you know you've got a few extra bites once that bait comes off of the cover whether you're ripping grass or or fishing wood or in this case rock in the grass um but that that's part of the reason why i'm throwing the seven here it's not that deep here it's only about three feet deep but it's uh that seven gets down rather quickly to, to three feet deep. So I'm pretty much hitting that rock every time if I want to, as long as I make the right cast. If I was fishing like a two foot flat or something, I would definitely be throwing the regular, the regular tiny has the same action, cast the same, same awesome hooks on it. Tell you what, and if you make that, if you make that right cast, like right to the front of that leading big rock on the edge of the grass, is that's that's really where they are. If you miss it a little bit, sometimes you don't get bit. But if you make the right cast, they're they're sitting on the front of that thing. It was a little bit better. Yeah, this is this is the ideal situation for for 360. For 360, right? We have very very little wind. Um, the structure that I'm fishing is directly in front of the boat, so I'm facing right towards it on spot lock. And when you're not moving, that 360 gives such a clear image and gives you essentially it lines up your cast for you. You know, you look at that 360 just like the hands on a clock and. You know, right now I'm making a two o'clock cast and that's exactly where that big boulder is that I need to hit. So the 360 really takes the guesswork out of it. A little bit better. Definitely chubby. It's not a super long one. Get that one back. You just get on that thing so nice. 